Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth, and I'm going to put it out there. If that bothers you, if that rubs you the wrong way, you on the wrong channel. Because I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to bring out the truth. I'm going to be well-rounded. But somebody say tell the truth. When I ask you a question, you have to tell me the truth. Because I'm about to tell the truth. Love and honor go together. And it's a blessing to be able to honor one another. We are God's creation. And he has sent us all a rescue. He sent the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to be a mercy to all of mankind. And I have love for all people. Don't get it twisted just because I must expose the wickedness of Edom. I have to keep it real. Okay, 99.9% of the teaching we have came to us courtesy of Paul, courtesy of the white man. That's why Edom is so significant in the Bible. And there's many different types and shadows and meanings and metaphors when it comes to Esau, when it comes to Edom. Because Esau also goes into Esau. The prophet, peace be upon him. But it also goes into Paul, who wants to be Isa. He's the twin of the prophet Isa. You may call him Yeshua. Some call him Yahawashai. Okay? It is the same person. Now, I'm going to tell the truth, and I'm ashamed of the devil. Regardless how you feel, I'm not desperate. Okay? I know that this channel has the truth. And I'm skeptical about anybody just joining what the Most High has been giving me. I'm not desperate for nobody. So I'm going to tell the truth, okay? Okay, 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 okay? Now, you would be a fool if you think God is not upset at the false teaching that's been coming from the white race. This is the reason why he's allowing all these men that people put their hope in to fail them, such as Sam Bankman Freed, okay, such as Bernie Madoff, okay, these people were hailed as heroes, and all these people put their trust in them, put their hopes in them, and they were disappointed, and that's how the whole world has been with the white man's teaching, no, it's not a race thing, but it is a truth thing, and that's the reason why God expresses his hatred he has for Esau is going into a religion and there is a race who's responsible, who's most responsible for spreading that garbage. Now, today we're going to go through Joshua chapter seven, but we have to deal with Joshua. Now, the name Joshua, seeing that there is no J in the Hebrew alphabet, his name is really Yahshua, okay, and his name means saved. Now, if we go to salvation in the Bible, salvation in the Hebrew literally is Yeshua. So Jesus' name literally is salvation. If you was to type in salvation in a Bible concordance, it's going to bring up the name of Jesus, which is Yeshua. Now, this is what you need to meditate on and realize that Jesus' name means salvation. And Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, rescued him. Okay, he raised him up to himself. And he is the one that is going to cause him to die. Now, with that being established, we understand that salvation means Yeshua and Yeshua means salvation. Now, in the New Testament, it's pronounced Jesus. The same name Joshua is actually the same name as Jesus, okay? It's just in Greek in the New Testament. And it's going into Jesus, okay? And that name literally means salvation of the Lord. Now, Joshua or Yahshua is a common name. 
Joshua wasn't the only one named Joshua. There are four different individuals named Joshua in the Bible, not counting those with the name Jesus. The Bible mentions multiple people with the name Jesus, including two baby Jesuses. One is depicted in the Gospel of Matthew and the other in the Gospel of Luke. Other people named Jesus, these include Elimus, Bar Jesus, a Jew who opposed Paul in the book of Acts. There is a Jesus in the book of Acts who opposed Paul. Now you ought to meditate on that, okay? Because to be honest, this man was a sorcerer and so was Paul. Paul is the hypocrite and he's constantly mocked in the Bible. For instance, the Bible says Paul had a situation where there was a person who came into his church who was an Israelite and he had his father's wife. And that was mocking Paul because Paul was the one who stole the father's wife. And the father's wife is the church metaphorically. Paul had his father's wife. He had his father's church. This is all metaphor. Don't get surprised and don't get stupid on me. Okay, this is going into metaphors. This is going into how Paul was the man who stole God Almighty's church. Now, all these different Jesuses in the Bible, Jesus is not significant. There's many people named Jesus. There's many people named Joshua. It's the same name. Now, check this out. Moses is different. There's not one person in the Bible named Moses, but Moses. There is no second Moses in the Bible. Moses did not even have a successor. Joshua was not his successor because at the end of Deuteronomy, it tells us there arose no prophet in Israel like Moses, whom God dealt with face to face. So why is Moses more significant than Jesus. Now think about this. The Bible says God made Moses a God to Pharaoh and God made Moses a God to his brother Aaron. Okay, going into the miracles and the signs and how Aaron was his messenger and Moses was like a God to Pharaoh. Now this is not so with Joshua. Joshua was not made a God. Joshua was a slave of Moses. Joshua was assistant to Moses. Joshua was a servant to Moses. Why? Because Jesus, he came under the curse of Canaan. In other words, he was a servant of servants. There's always someone greater than Joseph. There's always someone greater than Joshua. There's always someone greater than Jesus. That's just the anointing he was under. He was not under the Solomon anointing. He was not under the Moses anointing. There's only one prophet of history who is under that same anointing as Moses. And that is the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who is spoken of in Deuteronomy 18, 18, when God said he will raise up from among your brethren, from among your countrymen, a prophet like unto Moses. So look at all this, man. If Jesus was the main man, okay, why wasn't he made a God? Why wasn't he Moses? Why wasn't Moses in the Bible five, six, seven times and Jesus only in the Bible mentioned once? Why? Because God knew y'all was going to make an idol out of him. He knew this. Okay. Now, let's go to the prophet Muhammad. If you was to go to Google and ask who is the first person to be named Muhammad, and it is the son of Abdullah, and that is the prophet Muhammad. Born 570 CE, okay, approximately in the city of Mecca, in the Arabian Peninsula. In the Bible, we call it Paran, okay? This is also going into the same place where the prophet Muhammad showed up in Mecca, 629 CE with 10,000 Muslims, as seen in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. 
So we see that the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, his name is significant. He is the first person to be named Muhammad. In the Quran, he is the only one named Muhammad, just like Moses in the Bible. He is the only one named Moses. Why? Because the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he is the prophet like unto Moses. Not so with Jesus. Jesus wasn't married, okay? And Jesus did not have any children. He's nothing like Moses as much as these Christians the only reason why they go to the law of Moses is to try to tell you that Jesus is the prophet like Moses and it is a complete lie. Jesus was nothing like Moses. And that's just the truth. We even have a Christian scholar by the name of James L. Dow in the Collins Gym Dictionary. And he says the only person of history who could be remotely compared to Moses and that is the prophet Mohammed. Now a Christian is admitting this truth. It will help you to stop lying. Let's deal with reality. We all know Jesus did not deliver his people from the Romans. He did not deliver his people from oppression. But the prophet Mohammed did. So as you can see, if Jesus really was the prophet like Moses, we would see in the Bible. But we see that Jesus was a common name. We see that there's many people named Jesus. There was many people named Joshua, but it was not so with Moses. And it was not so with the prophet Muhammad. Now, Muhammad is the most popular name. Okay. His name is all over the world in all different languages, because this is the man whom you hate whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to honor, okay? So now let's get to Joshua chapter 7 and verse 1. When we deal with the book of Joshua, you have to understand that this is going into Jesus. Joshua was a type and shadow of the prophet Isa because Joshua was not the number one guy, okay? He was not, just like the prophet Isa. The prophet Isa wasn't the number one guy, Moses was. Okay, so just like Joshua was second, we see that the prophet Isa is second. The picture of the life and story of Jesus is seen in the story of Joshua, particularly when Jesus Christ comes back as a just ruler. Now, let's go to Joshua chapter seven, verse one. I'm going to read the entire chapter with you, and you're going to see how I read the Bible, how I pause on certain words, and I give you the sense. Joshua 7, verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So God was mad at the whole nation of Israel because of what one man did. Now, that sounds quite familiar in the story of the prophet Isa. The prophet Isa was questioned by Allah because of everybody making him God and his mama God, okay? The prophet Isa got in trouble because of the people, because of Paul. And it's the same thing with Joshua right now. Joshua is in trouble with God all because of what one person did. Now, when it says the accursed thing, I'm going to show you what that means. We were told not to steal things and then try to put these things among our stuff. Now, this is going to be in the book of Exodus 22 and 7. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Okay, now, this word that's key is stuff. Now, to you, you might not catch that. But I'm going to show you where there's another reference with stuff 
in the Bible, when you study, you have to pay attention to everything. Every word means something. Now let's go to 1 Samuel 10, 22, and we will come back. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further. If the man should yet come thither, this is speaking of Saul, when he was anointed to be king, he was hiding. He was hiding. Now check this out. And the Lord answered, behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. So just like Achan, okay, this is going into the prisoner of the Lord. Paul was a prisoner. Why was Paul a prisoner? All the other apostles was not called prisoners for the most part. They all experienced prison, okay, but Paul on another level, okay? Paul called himself the prisoner of the Lord, okay? Now, Paul was the man who stole something and hid it among his stuff. And here we have reference in 1 Samuel 10, 22. The first time Saul comes on the scene to be anointed king, he is hiding amongst the stuff, okay? This is all going back to where we was just at. In verse 11 of Joshua 7 and 11, boy, I like that. We're going to catch back up in 7 and 11, but we're going to start back at verse 2. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. Now something else just went right over your head. They are in Jericho, okay? They are in the land where the two spies were hid, okay? And in this land, they only saved one nation, and that was Rahab and her family. And that's going into the Arabs. This is going into how Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. Now, Joshua told the people that whoever tried to rebuild the city of Jericho would pay for it with the firstborn of their son as the foundation and the younger son would set up the gates thereof. So this is going into the religion of Christianity. Now, someone is going to have to die if you rebuild the city of Jericho. And that is the prophet Isa at the last day. But the younger son who set up the gates will have his own prison in hell. Bulas. Paul and Jesus is the religion of the Christian church. Paul was the father and Jesus was the son. Okay, so now let's keep going. Verse 3, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So the children of Israel knew that God had their back. They had nothing but success everywhere they went. So they telling Joshua, we don't need all these people. You know what? We'll, we'll take them out with just a few men. And Joshua, get this, the Joshua the picture of Christ. He was unaware what the children of Israel had did. Now think about this. If Joshua was really in tune with God, and if he really was on the same page as God Almighty, prophetically, he would have knew something was wrong. But this goes to show you, man, Jesus was human. Everybody is human. Only person is God is God. Even Joshua had shortcomings, and he did not know he had a thief in his church. Okay? This is going into the prophet Isa. He was unaware of a thief that would be in the church. Now, let's keep going on. So there went up thither of the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shabaram, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. So something was terribly wrong. The children of Israel lost a battle. That means something is terribly wrong. Verse 6, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. He and the elders of Israel 
and put dust upon their heads. So here we have Joshua bowing down to the one and only true God. And Joshua said, Allah's. And Joshua said, Allah. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Oh, Lord God, wherefore has thou at all brought this people over Jordan? How come Joshua don't know? How come Jesus don't know? Jesus even said that he does not know the day or the hour, okay, of his return. Jesus was limited on revelation just like Joshua, okay, of the Beni Israel. He was limited on his revelation. So he's asking God, why are you allowing this to happen? Why you brought all these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. So if you pay attention to the wordplay, Joshua is pray, complaining, arguing. He's praying, he's complaining, and he's a little argumentative. Just like Abraham when he said, won't the God of the earth do right? Concerning Lot. When he talked God all the way down to 10 righteous people from 50. So let's keep going. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies? So he's constantly rambling on. Joshua is limited on his revelation. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us, that's going in to encircle us, and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do unto thy great name? God don't care about none of that. Why? Because there's sin in the camp. Watch this. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? There's not one scripture in the Bible like this. God is telling Joshua to get up. Get up. Stop crying. Stop pray complaining. Get up and think about it. He is telling Joshua or Yeshua or Yahweh Shai, there is sin in your camp. Now, I thought Joshua died for everybody's sins. Now, God is all wise. He's all knowing. You know that's a diss to Jesus, peace be upon him, because he's limited on his revelation and on his knowledge. He did not know the hour. And so in the Quran, we exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by calling him all-knowing. The all wise, okay? And this is just keeping it real. This man supposedly died for everybody's sins, but we have a story in the Bible of God getting on Joshua, Yahshua, and he's telling him somebody sinned. I guess this sin wasn't covered by the blood of Jesus. All that nonsense is being destroyed right now. Somebody sinning. God ain't never changed, okay? Now, this is a picture of the prophet Isa and God Almighty. Now, the prophet Muhammad, whether you like him or not, peace be upon him, he gave us the revelation in Quran 5, 116. It tells us, God will say to Jesus, did you ever ask the people to worship you as your God and your mother, okay? There's sin going on in the camp. And we have the same story in our Bible. If we would just open up our eyes, we have to open up our eyes. Y'all just think cherries is just going to fall on y'all. You got to dig. If everything was in plain sight in the Bible, okay, why would he be telling you to search, search, look, see? Why would he be telling you to receive the ice off? There are some things that are hidden in the Bible, and y'all surface read so much, y'all fail to realize that Jesus spoke in parables only, and automatically you hear a crucifixion in the Bible, and you just set your whole heart on it. You don't even evaluate it. You don't even look to see who carried Jesus' cross, how John says Jesus carried his cross, and how all the other gospel so-called eyewitnesses which is nothing but anonymous gospel writers, say that Simon the Cyrene carried the cross. And even after his so-called resurrection, they didn't even recognize him. Mary thought he was a gardener. There's some fishy things going on. For those who surface read, that's going to be lost. But for those of us, okay, 
who pay attention and we consider everything and we line up the scriptures and we do an evaluation and we bring in the Solomon concept, we see that there's some things going on that's hidden. So going on, God told Joshua to get up off your face. Get up. Okay. How come God doesn't tell nobody anything like this? This is the only time in the Bible where God Almighty gets on a person like this. And amazingly, his name is Joshua. His name is Jesus. His name is Yeshua. He's telling Yeshua, get up off your face. There's sin in the camp. There's sin going on in the church. There's a Ponzi scheme going on in the church, promising high returns with little to no risk, promising heaven, promising all your sins forgiven. All those things are going into a huge Ponzi scam going on in the church. The church is too good to be true. There's something fishy about it. Okay. And Joshua thought everything was kosher. He didn't realize that there was a person in his church that stole something. That was the thief. That portrayed to be the father. Okay. This is all going into Paul. He is the prisoner of the Lord. He is the Akon. He is the scar. And right here in the house of David, we are exposing the wolf in sheep clothing. Going on, verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. Now pay attention. He is telling Joshua. Which he is telling Joshua, which is the equivalent of Jesus. I will not be with you no more until you destroy the cursed thing from among you. Now, amazingly, in the Hades, we hear about Jesus returning as a just ruler. And the first thing he will destroy is the cross. Sometimes I just assume you guys know these things. And I skip past a lot of the hate deeps, okay? I just assume people actually study. So I'm going to actually get the scripture this time that's in the hate deeps of Jesus destroying the cross, okay? So let's get that. This is going to be in the Al Bakari 2476, narrated by Abu Ha Arari. May Allah be pleased with them. Allah's messenger said, The hour will not be established. Until the son of Mary, Jesus, descends amongst you as a just ruler, he will break the cross, kill the pig, and abolish the jizzy tax. Money will be in abundance so that nobody will accept it as charitable gifts. So the first thing the prophet Isa will destroy when he returns is the cross. And this lines up perfectly with Joshua chapter 7. OK, Joshua has to destroy the accursed from among him. If he does not, God will not be with him no more. Now, that's deep. OK, and this revelation is in our Bible. OK, we have truth in our Bible. If you would just search for it, like go going on. Verse 13 up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow now sanctify is going into purification the Bene israel did purification they did ritual washings they had to wash their clothes they had to wash up just like we wash up in islam okay sanctify yourselves against tomorrow for thus saith the lord god of israel there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee O israel thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the cursed thing from among you in the morning. Therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord take of shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. There's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp, y'all. Let me tell you something. There is sin 
in the camp and that is going into the tribe of Judah which is going right to the tribe of Benjamin which is going right to Saul who is Paul by name. They're sin in the camp. And your church is failing to bring this out. Your pastor, although he has a remarkable salary, has failed to bring this out. Your camp leaders, okay, is failing to bring this out. Your bishop has failed to bring this out. That there is sin in the camp and that is going into Paul from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, and most people get lost when I say Benjamin. They fail to realize that the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom used to be one. But during Solomon's reign, it was split. So we had the southern kingdom, which was Judah, and we had the northern kingdom, which was Ephraim. And so the northern kingdom consisted of all the tribes minus Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. They were all considered the southern kingdom kingdom so when we say there's sin in the camp of judah those of us who have knowledge we know that that is still going to benjamin verse 17 and they brought the family of judah and he took the family of the zarhites and he brought the family of the zarhites man by man and zabdi was taken and he brought his household man by man and akon the prisoner of the lord mr i'm locked up they won't let me out. That's going into Paul. It's amazing how God has a sense of humor and how he has exposed Paul, even in the Lion King story. This is so deep. It just amazes me how God has humor because this stuff is so funny. <laughs> Mr. Locked Up, they won't let me out. Mr. Akon, okay, who has gay tendencies, okay, perfectly matching up with your boy, Paul, the man who limited the number of wives, the man who had no wife, okay, the man who told us all to be single. This is the man who was caught stealing, going on, and Akon, and Joshua said unto Akon, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel. And Joshua said unto Akon, my son. Give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him. Uh oh, it's confession time. I keep telling y'all there is a secret hidden. OK, and when Jesus was speaking parables, he was uttering those secrets that was hidden from the foundation of the world. And that is Paul is responsible for the false murder of the prophet Isa. Paul is the founder of. And the father of the Christian church. And he is the thief. He is the father of lies. All that. Okay. Is going into the secrets. That was hidden. These secrets was hidden about Paul. And a lot of people do not know. About all of his dirty laundry. Okay. His list is long. The Bible says that Benjamin. His mess was five times over. And the mess that Paul made is worse than the mess Adam made. It's worse than all the messes that's been made on planet Earth all together. Okay. Paul is the enemy of God. And it is written, Judah's hands shall be in the neck of his enemy. So we're not letting up. Right here in the house of David, we are not letting up. What's done in the dark is going to come to the light. And Paul was like Moses, okay? He killed an Egyptian and hid him in the sand. He didn't think nobody knew, okay? And that's going into how Jesus was killed by Paul. And this was a great secret that was hidden. Most people do not even know. But in the nation of Islam, we know that the prophet Isa was not crucified. OK, that was a secret that was hidden from the foundations of the world. And when Moses killed an Egyptian, he did not know everybody knew. OK, and that's exactly what Paul did. He killed Joseph, which is a picture of Christ. He killed an Egyptian, the firstborn of Pharaoh. OK, he killed the prophet Esau on biblical record. And it's all his fault. That God Almighty is going to cause Jesus to die a natural death 
at the last day. So let's keep going on. And Achan answered Joshua. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels. Wait, then I coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth. OK, these truths are hid in our Bible. If you would just open up your eyes in the midst of my tent or my church and the silver under it. So the Babylonish garment is going into the mantle. Paul tried to steal the coat of many colors. And that is the mantle of being the Gentile messenger. Remember, Paul tells you he is an apostle to the Gentiles. The only problem is he's a self-proclaimed apostle to the Gentiles. Paul cursed Islam in Galatians 1 and 8, and he presumed to take on the office of the Deuteronomy 18, 18 prophet. Not only did he do that, okay, he is responsible for the false murder of the prophet Isa on biblical record. Okay, that's what the silver is going into. Jesus was stolen from the land of the Hebrews. Okay, and he was put in Christianity. Okay, but Jesus is going back to the land of the Hebrews and he's going into the religion of Islam. Y'all fail to realize that Paul stole Jesus, who was the Messiah of Islam, and tried his best to put him into Christianity. But that right there didn't work. OK, and then he took the wedge of gold. OK, that's going into the cross. OK, that's going into the false murder. I already told you. And he coveted them. Behold, they are hid in the earth. Now, that's going into how these truths are hid in the Bible. And most of people who study the Bible don't see it. Now, am I the only one who knows that Paul was an imposter? No. There's dozens of people who know this. Many people know this, okay? Especially in Islam. We all know this. But right here in the house of David, there is not one single channel who is going into full detail on what really happened to the prophet Isa and what's really going on with the Christian church and Paul. Right here in the house of David, we are exposing that truth on a larger scale all glory be to the most high so joshua is now confronting akon and he's telling akon give god the glory in other words all of the glory that was stolen from god the father okay and was put upon jesus guess what god's coming and he's taking all that glory back that you put upon isa there's coming a day all the glory that was put upon jesus is going to go right back to the father this is the reason why joshua is saying to mr locked up give god the glory paul was the one who made all these false lies about the prophet isa okay he was the one that blew up his head he is the one who did all of this exaggerating on the prophet isa and that's why joshua is confronting him and he's saying you know what give god the glory OK, now he's confessing. He's like Usher. <laughs> he's confessing everything he did. So now let's keep going. Verse 22. And Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Akon, Mr. Locked Up, the prisoner of the Lord. OK, Paul was always in prison. He was putting people in prison and he was in prison because Paul has a prison named Bulas, which is Paul. He has a prison named after him in hell. He is the rich man right now begging for water. He is the rich man wanting someone to come back from the dead and warn his Christian church. Okay. We are living in the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting that request. You better wake up 
and realize Paul is in a prison named Bulas, okay? And he is trying his best to warn you not to come here. You better repent and receive Islam because right now you on your way to be with your daddy. You right now on your way to be with the father of the Christian church as it is stated in 1 Corinthians 4.15. Going on. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and Joshua and all Israel with him took Akon. Mr. Locked Up won't let me out. The son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters. That's his whole church, his oxen and asses. OK, that's going into the Arabians or the people who used to be Muslim and then they converted to Christianity. That's dumb. OK, and his sheep that's going into the fake Jews and his tent, the church and all that he had, everything. Everything is burning up with Paul. Just like when Sam was caught in that huge fraud, okay? When everybody blew his head up. When this man literally was talking about giving all his billions to the poor. Mr. Sam, who had the whole world deceived, okay? Everybody that was with him went down with him. And it's the same thing in Christianity. Everybody who's with Paul is going down with him. Paul, okay, we are the whistleblowers right here in the house of David, and we are exposing this scam going on in Christianity. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. I told you, you're going straight to the fire, you're going to the fire. You're going to the prison named Bulas. And I'm going to read that last. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Echor unto this day. Allah Akbar. Okay, Allah is the greatest. I give him all the praise. He has exposed the troubler of Israel. And the story of Paul and Jesus is repeated over and over and over and over. Beginning with the first murder. Cain, who killed his brother. That was Paul. It was his fault that the prophet Isa has to die. This is the reason why Jesus was saying, take this cup from me. He wasn't crying about a cross. He was crying about a cup. He was like, take this cup because he was the cup bearer for Paul. He was forced to. To swear by the life of Pharaoh in the Gospels. Just like Joseph, he swore by the life of Pharaoh. He didn't swear by the God of Israel. He swore by the life of Pharaoh and he had the cup of divination, which was passed into the sack of Benjamin. And that's going into Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing. Okay, Paul has the cup of divination in the Christian church and we are blowing the whistle. On it. Now, I have the Hadi. This is going to be by Yami at Termiti. Book 37, Hadi 2680. May Allah be pleased with him. The proud will be gathered on the day of judgment. Oh, I can sing that. The proud shall be gathered. They shall be gathered on the day of judgment, resembling tiny particles. In the image of men, they will be covered with humiliation everywhere. They will be dragged into a prison in hell called Bulas, submerged in the fire of fires, drinking the drippings of the people of the fire, filled with derangement. Now, the prophet Esau, peace be upon him, he tells us about this prison in the book of Joshua. 
He talks about those who wanted to rebuild Jericho would pay for it on the expense of their first son being the foundation and the second one setting up the gates. And I believe that gates is going into the prison called Bulas, which is Paul in the Arabic tongue. Now, also, Jesus gave us a parable in Luke 16, where the man who talked about somebody coming back from the dead, who is none other than Paul, is in hell. I have a greater respect for the Bible, knowing that God Almighty in the book of Joshua already gave us a glimpse of Bulas, this prison in hell. And then the prophet Isa comes on the scene after and he talks about a certain rich man being in this place, I believe to be hell. That rich man can only be Paul. He's the only one who teaches about Jesus Christ resurrecting from the dead. And that's what the rich man wanted. And Abraham, the real Abraham, told the false Abraham that that type of stuff don't happen. There's a great gulf fixed. And if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, he said they won't be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.